Golden Ticket, Good as Gold, Golden Boy, The Gold Standard, Gold Baby Salad Gold. <laughs> Don't mind me, just coming up with all the possible variations of gold puns because I have a feeling we're going to need them. Good morning, Cardinals fans. Welcome back to About Last Night, the show where we drink some coffee together and talk about what happened last night. What a difference 24 hours can make, am I right? This is why we don't panic after game one, friends. The Cardinals and the Brewers each sent young pitching stars to the mound last night, and those previously problematic one through six spots for St. Louis greeted Freddie Peralta with a walk, a two-run homer, a hit-by-pitch, a fielder's choice, an RBI double, and another walk. And then sluggers, Colton Wong and Harrison Bader, went back to back again with strikeouts. But that is what the top of the order should look like. And that, my friends, was just the opening act. But a 10 pitch at bat by Paul Goldschmidt in that inning that ended with a basically popped up home run, seriously, that might have been the worst contact he made in that at bat, was a perfect example of what makes him so good. Strength. It's his brute strength, obviously. Get some good pitches, keep it simple, hit him hard, he told Jim Hayes after the game. And yes, please do more of that. He did. So the Cardinals once again jumped out to a 3-0 lead early, and Jack Flaherty was cruising through two and two-thirds innings. But did I mention that this Brewers lineup is really, really good? Tie game. It was back and forth after that. Station to station baseball, contributions from everyone on both sides, and an atmosphere that felt a lot more like late August than late March. Palpable, one might call the tension, from both dugouts. Mike Schilt made his first questionable pitching choice of the season when he left Flaherty in to face the top of the Brewers lineup again after seemingly running out of steam in the fourth inning. Jack's slider wasn't sliding enough and his fastball got a little floaty in the top of the zone. I wasn't a huge fan of the move, even though I know it was only the fifth inning, but it turns out Schilt wasn't a fan of what he saw from Jack in the fifth inning, as John Gant pretty quickly came in for the second straight day to eliminate a Brewers threat. Here's the really good news. Paul Goldschmidt's a Cardinal. Watching him last night, I kept imagining, well, this. Three. Remember the radio? Radio? Stick? Hitting in the stick? Let's go! Let's go! Except the opposing pitchers are Doris and Sanka, and the baseballs are the radio. Dude just crushes baseballs. And two games into his career as a St. Louis Cardinal, his at-bats have become must-see television. His second and third home runs of the night, yes, I kind of buried the lead off the top of the show, doubled up Milwaukee's run total on the night with an assist from Matt Carpenter, who notched his 1,000th career hit that came along with an RBI. Congratulations, Matt. And by the time Alex Reyes entered in the seventh inning, the Cardinals were on cruise control. Can I just say what a relief it is to see Alex Reyes leave the mound in Milwaukee not injured? The biggest problem for the Cardinals came in the form of Andrew Miller's debut. It did not go particularly well. A homer, a hit by pitch. If you want all the details, check out Stu's full recap at birdsontheblack.com. Suffice it to say, the NL Central has been put on notice. Paul Goldschmidt is here, and he's an entirely different level of hashtag good. And that is the story of the Cardinals' 9-4 win over the Brewers, the night that Paul Goldschmidt's St. Louis legend began. Be sure you hit subscribe and turn on your notifications because you never know what story I'll have to share with you next. It's Dakota Hudson tonight getting his first major league start, and I'll see you then.